blackouts are coming. In the grip of the global energy crisis, here in the UK they keep talking about scheduled rolling blackouts that are expected to last for about three hours. This is my attempt to find a low-cost solution to keep my gas boiler and my fridge freezer running while the mains power is off. Will the EcoFlow River 2 be the right choice? At the moment, I am motor homeless. As an Air Force brat, we moved around a lot. I'm guessing that's why I've spent most of my life traveling. And when I learned to drive in my parents' high ace camper van, I think this fueled my passion for an adventurous life. As a younger man, I started off by roughing it in an old Series 2 Land Rover and an even older caravan. But over the years, I've converted and restored five vans an old 1973 40-foot AEC race bus. One of my favourites was a 1962 Austin minivan. My beloved left-hand drive Mercedes Hymer. And most recently, I converted a 23-foot Hino bus complete with matching toy trailer. And did I mention, I'm also teaching myself to play the violin. I've had these boxes sitting in the corner of the room for a couple of weeks now. But as the weather's getting colder, I thought I'd better get them out and try setting them up. Like most EcoFlow products I've seen, the River 2 comes well packed in a no-frills cardboard box. Inside is the Quick Start Guide. You can download it from their website but a paper copy is still nice to have. The unit itself, and there are three cables. The mains power cable, mine's a three pin UK plug. Car charging cable, it comes with a 12, 24 volt cigarette lighter plug on one end and an XT60 plug on the other. There is also a 12 volt, 3 amp DC5521 connection cable. That's a 5.5 millimeter outer and a 2.1 millimeter inner. I don't know that I'll ever use it, but it's included. The River 2 Max is a handy size and it doesn't look out of place sitting here on my kitchen bench. On the front, there's three USB-A ports and a 100 watt two-way USB-C port that you can use to charge your devices or you can use it to power in so that you can charge the River 2 Max itself. Next there is the car cigarette lighter output capable of 10 amps and below that is the two 3 amp DC5521 outlets and along the bottom here, there are the two AC socket outlets. Mine's the UK version, so it's 230 volts at 50 to 60 hertz from the pure sine wave inverter that'll deliver 500 watts or a surge of up to 1000 watts. On the back, there are both AC and DC input. The AC input is what I'd call a standard cattle cord plug. And the DC input is the ever-popular XT60 plug. So the aim is to get the River 2 Max to run my Baxi Combi gas boiler and my Beko fridge freezer for at least three hours. Just in case they do start the scheduled rolling blackouts. On paper, it should do this, plus more. Boiler alert. After spending quite a bit of time running an extension lead from the boiler around the back of the cupboards and up to where I wanted the river to sit on my countertop, when I try to run the boiler off the River 2 Max, the boiler powers up and starts to run, but after a minute or two, it comes up with an error message, E133. After a quick look at the book, that's an interruption to the gas supply or a flame failure. 
I can only guess, but I would suggest that some part of the boiler doesn't like the power that's coming from the inverter. It could be the gas shut-off valve not opening, the pressure sensor not reading right, or simply the igniter not firing. So while I wait for EcoFlow to email me back, or I'll have a search of the Baxi website service pages and see whether anybody else has had a similar problem. Let's see how long it runs the fridge by itself. It's just gone 1 p.m. If it's just the fridge freezer drawing power off the River 2 Max, I think it might be a long night for me. As our Beko fridge is relatively new, it has a great energy rating. In preparation before buying the battery backup system, I bought a pair of these Maxio 13 amp energy monitors. Money well spent. As you can get a really good idea of how much power each appliance is using. After monitoring the fridge for about two weeks, its low power consumption is about 0.9 watts. Guessing that's just the light when you open the door. But the high power consumption varies. Most days it's 98 watts. But on shopping days it jumps to uh, about 190 watts. Our fridge has a boost mode, so when you put your shopping in there and it's not quite at the right temperature, the, the boost kicks in and pulls it down really quickly. However, this didn't really affect the average usage by much. Coming out at less than 720 watt hours per day. So we're drawing an average of 30 watts per hour, maybe less during the night when the heating's off, and slightly more during the day when we keep opening the fridge door. As we're starting this in the middle of the day, let's work on an average of about 40 watts per hour. A quick look at the specs, the River 2 Max has a maximum output of 500 watts, so at 190 watts, we're well under that. And with a battery capacity of 512 watts, so 512 divided by 40, that suggests that we'll get about 12.8 hours. I'm not certain how much of that 512 watts will be eaten up by the River 2 Max itself. But the way the fan runs, I'm guessing that might be quite a bit. I'm not going to do a huge time lapse of the battery running down. I've set my alarm to go off every hour on the hour and we'll just keep an eye on it. But before we look at the results, I just wanted to share my thoughts on expanding the capacity of the River 2, as EcoFlow hasn't offered an expansion battery pack this time. And do we really need one? I have a load of these Ryobi OnePlus 18 volt lithium batteries for my cordless drills and stuff. And on Amazon's I found these power adapter caps that fit on top of the Ryobi batteries and these Y leads to run them in series. The XT60 port on the back of the River 2 will take up two 50 volts. So two Ryobi 18 volt batteries in series gives us 36 volts. 
I have two of the 4 amp batteries wired up at 36 volts. Gives us 144 watts, which is about 28% of the River 2 Max capacity. But before we start, let's make certain that both batteries are fully charged. When connecting batteries in series and draining them, if the batteries are at different charge levels, you can damage them quite badly. Else you'd be better off plugging them into the river one at a time. When I unpacked the River 2 Max, it came out of the box charged to 31%. So I figured this would be a great time to see if this works. Looking good so far. Charging at just over 200 watt. I don't know whether that's the River 2 Max that's restricting it or whether it's the battery management system on the Ryobi batteries. But it's working fine. Nothing's getting warm. It's charging nicely. And 37 minutes later, we were at 56%. So our calculation of 28% has turned into 25%. I'm happy with that. When I was looking for my power adapter caps, I did see them for other brands of battery. I know the Makita cordless power tools are very popular. So I'm certain you can find something to utilise the gear that you've already got. I also bought a 12 volt 100 amp hour Epoch Marine lithium battery. I bought this one because it was IP67 rated, dust and waterproof, has a built in heater and a really nice Bluetooth app. And with this plugged into the back of the River 2, I should have somewhere in the range of 1700 watt hours. But I'll save that one for another video. Okay, let's go see if the fridge is still running. Uh, but before we do, if you like this video, could you give me a thumbs up? It really helps the channel to grow. You could also subscribe so you don't miss out on the next video. After the first hour, we're down to 91%. At the end of the second hour, we are at 87%. Seventy-six percent after three hours. Sixty-four percent after four hours. Fifty-six percent after five hours. And after six hours, we're down to forty-nine percent. So we're looking good for about twelve hours of runtime. After seven hours, it's dropped quite a bit, down to 36%. I guess that's because we've been opening and closing the fridge door, getting our evening meal sorted. After eight hours, we're down to 29%. Nine hours, down to 21. After 10 hours, we're down to 9%. Not long now. Just as well, I can hear my bed calling. Finally, just over 11 hours and it's turned itself off. My goal was to run the boiler and the fridge, but after seeing it run the Beko fridge freezer for over 11 hours, I've got no complaints. And if I'd plugged the Ryobi batteries in, I could have extended that to somewhere around 13 and a half hours. Or hopefully, once I've got the Epoch 100 amp hour battery set up, I should get somewhere in the range of 36 hours. 
That'll certainly keep my food nice and safe. And if you got this far through the video, thank you for your support. Until next time.